The Steelers traded away Antonio Brown for a lot less, a three and a five. The Raiders introduced Antonio Brown on Wednesday, and here is what Antonio Brown said when he was asked during the press conference what he brings to his new team. Just super accountability. You know, I hold it, you know, maybe at the end of practice when I'm doing my jug machines, you know, bring the whole group over to see the jug machine. That way every guy in the group know, hey, we gonna, we count on you to make that catch. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm there watching you work, making that catch too, because when we all there, we there together. So, you know, bringing some of the principles and some of the things that make good camaraderie and build good teams to some of the things I know, just, you know, whatever needed. You know, being here, being a leader, and um, you know, taking hold of this thing full, full round it. I had to laugh when he said super accountability because I, I can't think of another guy with a greater disconnect between legendary work ethic on the field and chronic inability to show up for work on time. Right. That's not super accountability. No. And, and it, it, you know, I, I like the, the two characteristics don't mesh. If you are wired to bust your ass every day, no matter what, at work, you're also wired to show up on time. I can't think of anyone who, Rare. once they get to work, they're going to work harder than anyone, but good luck getting them to show up at work when you want them to show up at work. <laughs> that, that's right. Well, you know, I, I guess what we should we should clarify it and make it simpler. He is a legendary worker when it comes to walking out on the practice field, right? I don't think anybody's going, oh, man, he's amazing in the meeting room. I mean, you should see him. Whoa. Yeah, no, I think he looks at the meeting sometimes and just goes, ah, come on. I know how to, I know these players. I know how to run a slant. I'll get there when I get there, and then I'll show them on the field how good I am and how I know all these plays and they'll understand and hey uh yes so so from that I I giggled too but here's the thing Chris here, yeah, here's yeah. what I don't understand yeah, right right because there's valuable information being conveyed in the meeting room yes what if you pick up that one little thing that you didn't previously think of I because know. you are paying attention right and it helps you in a key moment in a key game right like maybe not running the hot route and a walkthrough at practice and the quarterback getting a little angry and then you're mad at the quarterback because he got angry even though it was your fault you didn't know it was a hot route I mean that's where it all started in Pittsburgh I mean anybody you talk to that's where the star the story started and that's about accountability and maybe talking and listening and and knowing some of those little nuances that maybe have just been implemented in the offense earlier that day in the meeting or whatever it may be so yes your points are valid um he he but he's accountable as far as work ethic on the field he's accountable as far as love of playing football and John Gruden is the type of coach and listen this goes on everywhere in the NFL except for New England because they can get away with it hey star players get away mo with more than the third string middle linebacker who just plays special teams sorry that's the way the world works in any business you know the star at any company gets away with a little wiggle room compared to the guys at the lower level so that goes out and John Gruden's not afraid to kind of play to that because he knows the guy's a baller when the lights turn on you know, John Gruden's going to love, we heard they might have had a meeting yesterday going over plays, right, Mike? I mean, John's going to eat that up. He's sitting there talking to a receiver, and they're talking ball, and they're talking little things like that to where if Antonio is three minutes late one day, he's going to brush it to the side because he's going to know the guy loves football and he's here to work. The story you told or the example you gave reminded me of the story of Jimmy Johnson cutting a player who fell asleep in the meeting room when he was coached the Cowboys. Right. And somebody asked him, what would you do if Troy Aikman fell asleep? He said, I'd get him a pillow. Ex <laughs> well, wait, Mike, that's exactly right. Let's just think about Bill Belichick, right? Nobody breaks the rules. Well, before he was Bill Belichick, you know, five, six time winning Super Bowl uh, head coach. When he was the defensive coordinator for the New York Giants, there was a sleeping bag at his feet during meetings. You know why? Because Lawrence Taylor, he was going to rest that because he might have been out that night before with some extracurricular activities and didn't sleep a whole lot. So they let him sleep, s s sit down and rest on the floor while the meeting was going on. You know why they let him do that? Because he was freaking Lawrence Taylor, and there's a good chance he was going to get three sacks that week, so they were going to deal with it. But he, here's a, we got to take a break. Yeah. But you know what? Was it Belichick or was it Parcells? Well, did yes. Belichick be, did Belichick take that example and say, "When I'm the guy, we're not going to have this kind of stuff. We're not going to have this separate set of rules. It's going to be the same rules for everyone." So, I mean, that's something we can have a discussion yeah, about yeah. another no, day. No but doubt. I just wonder how much of that was right. Bill Belichick versus Bill Parcells. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights.
from NBC Sports.